Welcome back to Ford Friday. I got a little free time. Let's get some work done on our 1965 Mustang rebuild project. Now, our next step is to get those rusty frame rails out of this old car to make way for our new ones. So, let's get that done. This is an all too familiar process. So we'll start off removing our antique seam sealer. I would have thought all this was gone by now, but I still found some. Now do the passenger side. Now I'll knock out the seam sealer around the quarter panel supports. And up the quarter. We're gonna need to get this out eventually. Might as well do it while we're here. Still some big stuff back in these pockets. Just kind of poured it in there. So now we're ready to start grinding out our welds. We're going to take out this bracket that braces up the quarter. It's got a couple seam welds on the bottom, so we're just going to grind those out. We got our new drill since our old one died last time. And you know, I thought it was a little suspicious that the safety experts have been really quiet lately. And I thought maybe it was because I was wearing gloves, kind of, and safety glasses. But as it turns out, they were actually just getting a new degree in small electric motor repair. I got all the, well, why don't you just change the brushes? Uh, well, there's nothing wrong with these. That isn't why it doesn't work. So you guys might want to get your money back for your free online courses. It turns out it's the switch. The switch is 20 bucks. A new drill is 50. So what I did was ordered a new switch for that drill and I'll have a spare. Why? Well, that takes a week to get. This takes 10 minutes. So now I have a spare that I can use next time this one breaks in 10 years, if I'm still doing this. So now we can start drilling out the spot welds on our little quarter brace here. Look at Richie Rich over here with his new drill. And we'll put our breaker in there, break these spot welds loose. Knock the seam welds loose at the bottom. It's hard to get to the back side, so I just slid underneath the whole thing. I win. Now we'll do the passenger side the same way. Grind off all the seam welds at the bottom. The guy welding the passenger side at the factory must have wanted his side to stay together. He added a few more welds. They were hard to get to, so I changed the disc so I could get in a little closer with the smaller disc. Now we'll drill out our spot welds. I didn't drill any pilot holes in these. We just went straight for the 5 16 This stuff drills pretty easy. Break all our spot welds out. There's always one. Wow. Oh look, more seam sealer. This is the part that was over the seat brace. Scrape that out of there. Now we can start drilling out the frame rail for the inner rocker. 
whatever you want to call it. We'll start with our 516 soles. Some of these spot welds are pretty big, almost up to a half an inch. We need a jack, move our jack stand. Not too easy to get one, so we'll just use our knee. Continue with our spot welds. There's a couple seam welds. We'll hit those with the grinder. Now we're gonna hit all of our spot welds with the 3 8 Need to use our patented knee jack again. That's one tool that's not available in my Amazon store along with my bumper installation tool. Get that last weld. Now use the grinder to make some of those holes a little bigger. And the newer cars, the spot welds are pretty consistent. And these older ones, it's anyone's guess what size they were. So now we got our favorite tool out, start knocking this all apart. Move the jack stand again. Just work each spot weld. Plenty of rust coming out of there. Now the floor panel goes underneath this brace. It's welded to the bottom, so we gotta cut it off. There's about a gallon of seam sealer in there and a couple spot welds. So we'll knock that little scrap off of there. Then we can cut out the seam welds that are holding that brace onto the frame rail. Now into the wheel well. We'll take the part off that's welded to the frame rail. Just a few spot welds. Drill them out, break them loose. We'll pry that little piece back. Make a little door. So we get to the couple welds that are underneath that. And presents. And that's what's left of the frame rail. Now we can wiggle it out of there. And that's what the frame rail looks like. Pretty rusty and scaly underneath. And that's where all those pieces were coming from. Even the supports started rotting out at the bottom. And this was the good side. So even though the outside didn't look too bad, the rust usually starts from the inside. Glad I decided to change this. There's all of our old frame rail. Somebody that got evicted. So I'm tired of old rusty cars, so now we're going to work on new rusty cars. We're back to the 15. Got a couple little scraps of the wheel well to take off, so we'll heat up the seam sealer. Pry it out of there. Now we'll grind the spot welds out. We don't care about this piece, and we don't want to cut into the panel below. So we'll just knock that panel off. Need a breaker for that last one. And it's done. In a pile. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. Heat up the seam sealer. 
a little controlled burn going on there. Didn't quite get it all. Hot potato. I didn't grind out those spot welds. And break that piece off. Work our way around. A couple good hits on this last piece. And a couple welds that won't give up. In the pile. So to make the clean freaks happy, I'm gonna sweep up the leftovers from the inner rockers. I need a little money to continue this build, so I plan on selling this in a rocker kit on eBay. Just look for the listing. 1965 Mustang OEM rocker kit. Some assembly required, some rest. Sounds accurate to me. So since that last frame row was quite a struggle, it really wasn't fun, I'm gonna try this one a different way. We're gonna use our favorite tool just to cut slits in the top and get the majority of this frame rail off. We'll leave the parts that are welded on there and then we'll cut those off separately. The top takes a while to cut. The bottom cuts pretty easy, it's pretty thin. It became pretty apparent at this point. You can see how much faster the chisel goes through the bottom. And it goes real fast now. We'll go back as far as we can. We'll go along the bottom. And we hit some holes. So we can skip a whole section there. Now we get as far as we can go. We cut a slice in it with the reciprocating saw. And finish our cuts with the chisel. Well, I was not expecting to find Easter egg basket filler in here. Looks like I had a tenant in this side too. So there's the inside of this frame rail. That's pretty thin. Those pits are pretty bad at the bottom. And this is what led me to change all this. Actually some holes. That brace is completely gone. That was where the seat brace went across the bottom. So water collected in there. All the Easter basket filler was actually little pieces of a tarp that some rodent had collected and made a house out of. So I assume it was covered up at one point, probably because the top was bad. Took in a bunch of water, and that's where all this rust came from. So much for a nice rust-free car I bought. So now we can drill our spot welds out of our little scraps that we left. We'll drill the 5 16 holes, and we'll run back over them with the 3 8 And now we can use our favorite tool to knock them out of there. Much easier to work with these little scraps than the whole big pieces. Wish I had done this on the passenger side. I cut the time in about half.
Now we get the bottom piece out. A lot of these just kind of fell out. I haven't decided if I'm going to change that inner piece on this side. It's got a little rust on it. We'll see how much it bothers me. Now into the wheel well. Got some undercoating to knock off so we can see the spot welds. Now we can drill our spot welds. Oops, too far. Break our spot welds loose. Try open our little door. Oh look, more frame round. Now we can knock this piece off the bottom of the support in the back. We'll knock all those handfuls of seam sealer out of there. And you can knock the rest of that piece out. Now we can break the seam welds off of the support on the frame rail. A couple spot welds in the back of that frame rail that we can't get to. So we'll hit them with a the breaker. And we'll knock that last weld out with the air chisel. Now we're going to sweep up our driver's side frame rail. Get it ready for eBay. 150 buy it now. In case you were wondering, new aftermarkets are like $100. Now comes a difficult moment. I need to remove my fender hangers. These are the brackets that hold the radiator support in the 2015, but they were a good place to store a fender. Now I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Well, that was for the fender, but we're going to move the brackets. They're going to be in our way when we're trying to put our fenders on for our 65. So we're going to use our spot weld drill. I don't want to drill into the frame rails, but I do want to get this piece off without cutting it up. I use the flat tip drill bit on these. Then we can break our spot welds loose. Now onto the passenger side. We'll unbolt the three ground wires. Because one wasn't enough Ford. Drill out our spot welds. Take the guard off so we can get to the inner three. Knock the spot welds out. Huh, came right off. So now we gotta put our engine back in. We need some weight on the front of the car so that it, the suspension sits level. So to make it easier, we're gonna pull off the headers. So we don't have to fight to get the engine in there. We already had one side out. We're just gonna pull the other side off. Put the nuts and bolts back in there so I don't lose them. And to make our life easy, we're going to take the shifter out of the way. Give ourselves a little bit more room. One bolt holds the bracket on. And one bolt holds the shifter itself. Put that back in there so we don't lose it. And now we're ready to put the engine and trans in. And the motor doesn't want to go in straight. Would help if I had an afternoon crew, but they're nowhere to be found. I think there was a sale on chalk somewhere. 
So we're going to roll the car to the engine instead of rolling the engine to the car. Wet it down. A little quick there, buddy. That's what happens when you try to lift down. We'll let it down a little more responsively this time. We'll just keep rolling the car forward underneath the engine. Keep letting it down and rolling it in. There's not a whole lot of room. And yes, if you're wondering, that is a seat belt holding it up. They're pretty tough. So now we can jack up the back of the trans. The engine has to go in a little bit more level at this point. Let the front down. And we got to move the front end over to the right, so we'll turn the wheels, roll it forward, get that motor mount to line up, and drop it in. Make sure our driver's side is in. And then we'll put the brace in for the trans. There wasn't a whole lot of room under there, so you don't get the watch. Let's see how close our body fits now. Lift it up, slide the chassis underneath. Let it down a little bit. If nothing else, we don't have to lift it as high as we used to. So we're making some kind of progress. Let the front end down. Lift the back end up. Roll it back. Now we can let the back end down. Let the front end down a little more. That's almost where it belongs. I right, let the back end down. Here's our next road black. That's the wheel wells. We're gonna need to trim those out a little bit. We're also gonna need to trim these braces. This brace across the center in the back. And this brace across the center in the back. First we'll trim out the wheel wells, then we'll get to these. Then, the frame rails. So we got the body a little bit closer this time. The front is actually where it belongs. The back, eh, we still gotta do a little work. Next time, we'll trim those wheel wells out and we'll get the back to drop down and see where we have to trim next. We'll just keep progressing back until we get to our frame rails at the end, and by then, it should fit. Hopefully, we can get that all done next time. So like this video if you found it interesting, share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see whatever else I'm working on or the rest of this build. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.